Ahoy, and welcome back, language teachers, to Adventures in Language. I'm your guide, Emily. And in this video, we're talking about something called the fluency illusion. Now, whether or not you've heard the term before, I guarantee you're familiar with the phenomenon. And for those of you who might not know me yet, I'm Emily. I'm a linguist at Mango Languages with my PhD in bilingual language processing. So I've taught English and Spanish and the language learning and teaching process is very near and dear to my heart. So I'm here to help you help your students get the most out of their language learning journeys. Sin más demora, let's get to it. I'm going to walk us through a scene that I'm sure as a language teacher, you have seen many versions of over the years. It's exam day and you have a student who has studied a lot and really truly prepared for the exam. They get in, they look at the exam and what happens? They freeze. They totally blank. So at the end of the class, they turn in their exam and they're up at your desk and they're asking like, what just happened? Like I studied, I have notes from class that I read over, and they might even ask like, am I just not smart enough? Do I have test anxiety? What's likely happening is a bad case of the fluency illusion. So what is it? The fluency illusion is an automatic cognitive process by which our mind subconsciously tricks us into believing that we understand more about the content than we actually do. Obviously, this can be problematic for students because it can lead them to believe mistakenly that they understand and are able to produce something actively in their speech, in the target language, just because they can passively understand it during comprehension. Sneak peek. The answer to overcoming the problem lies in, did you get it? Active learning strategies. And in our next video, we'll cover ways to incorporate them into your class. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and you'll be the first to know when that video goes live. So some historical context um, for the term fluency illusion. In this context, the word fluency actually isn't specific to fluency as we think about it in language learning. Fluency in this context really just means proficiency or mastery of any learning skill or, or content. It was a phenomenon originally identified by a psychologist in a paper that got very little recognition at the time. This was Gates, 1917. And it was coined many years later as a term within the field of psychology. However, second language acquisition researchers have since taken this general observation about learning and applied it to the second language acquisition process. And so what has resulted is entire academic programs, research programs devoted to understanding better how the fluency illusion impacts language learning. Uh, you know who actually knew uh, about the fluency illusion long before anyone else was talking about it? Sir Francis Bacon. He was a Renaissance philosopher, and way back in 1620, he reportedly wrote, if you read a piece of text 20 times, you will not learn it by heart so easily as if you read it 10 times while attempting to recite it from time to time and consulting the text when your memory fails. That was 1620, before we had like really good research methods. Turns out, without it, he got pretty close. Now, while the exact proportions are going to depend on a number of factors, current research suggests that if you have a study session planned, a good rule of thumb is to take the first third of that study session and use passive learning strategies. That's like skimming the textbook reading. And then for the rest of the study session, use active learning strategies. So that's practicing um, speaking aloud, creating your own sentences, um, other related code words for active learning opportunities that you might be familiar with include things like um, retrieval practice, self-examination, or simply testing. Stay tuned because we're going to cover all of that and more in our next video, where we'll take a look at five active learning activities that you can include in your classroom to combat the fluency illusion. Well, that's all for today. If you like the video, please let us know by subscribing to the channel. And as always, if you have a question or an idea for a video that you'd like to see from us, let us know down in the comments. We're always listening. Well, language teachers, that's all for now. Thank you for all that you do. Vidai do Vidinha, and I look forward to seeing you back here next time. Bye.
Don't forget to get your free Setting Good Goals worksheet, which you can access through the link in the description. If you haven't yet watched our other videos, then I invite you to check out our playlist here, chock full of language learning motivation and study strategies, etc., which you can use as a free resource for your students outside the classroom. Well, my fellow teachers, thanks for all that you do. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.